You are listening to Off the Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks, broadcasting from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show, and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 FM. In addition to listening to us on the radio, you can check out our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks, or you can download the Radio Lex app on your smartphone device. It is House Arrest Volume 3, ladies and gentlemen. I am broadcasting from my home studio, Mikasa, here in Lexington, Kentucky, in the Hamburg area. I feel like this is an area that nobody goes to, really. I feel like this is the the distant part of Lexington that nobody talks about. But oh, are you I, being serious right now? I do. I, I feel like that not many people... I feel like Lextonians look down on the people that live in Hamburg. I do. No. I like people that live in Lexington, I, I feel like that if they hear that you live in Hamburg, they're like, okay, I'm not interested. Then where's the elite place to live in Lexington then? The elite place, I, according to Lextonians, I would say Tate's Creek. No, not Tate's Creek. <laughs> Never mind. I would say probably Harrodsburg. Richmond would, Road. Richmond Road, probably Richmond for Road's the Lextonians. Nice. Yeah, but... Amber, how are you doing? We are social distancing. Amber Turner is in the studio with me, as she is always, and she is broadcasting from her house. And Amber, we are, this is House Arrest Series Volume 3, but we've been on quarantine for about four weeks now. It feels like it's been longer than four weeks, but uh, I'm good. I mean, you can see I've been doing a little home repair. Yeah, I see, I see. I can see that. Your wall looks different from last week, so you've been painting. I have. I've been painting. I've been uh, pressure washing the outside of my house, so it's been interesting around the Turner home. Well, let me just say this. People uh, people don't know. I mean, people that listen to the show know that I'm from the mountains. I grew up in Knott County, Kentucky, a very small town, very small rural area, and people ask me, how are you getting along with this quarantining and this social distancing, and, and are, are you bored? And I was like, no. At first I was, don't get me wrong, but then I, I just realized, hey, man, I'm from Knott County where we were quarantined all the time, where there was not much going on in the area. Let me just, I'm telling you, only the essentials were open, gas stations, places to eat, and really it was just pickup only. There wasn't many sit-down restaurants, and Amber, you're from the same area. We really didn't do a lot growing up, so I, I'm very accustomed and conditioned to to be bored to not have much to do it just reminds me of of growing up I mean I fully agree with you I mean like you said we just had the bare essentials you know in the area that we grew up in and at the same time they all did close at eight thirty nine o'clock so these curfews that are coming out are definitely no stranger to us because we we've, we've already dealt with it before uh, but yeah, I agree. It's nothing different than living in Beaver. It's really not. It really isn't. It's just kind of like I'm being thrust back into my childhood. But I, we are using Zoom again, the equipment that a lot of people are using. So I can see Amber and you can actually see Amber and myself on Facebook Live if you go to Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. And I, 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 it looks a little different. You can see that I, I changed my background a little bit, Amber. You did. I did. You it look like a, you're in an office like a big old office it is a big old office but you know what really frustrates me about people's webcams because we've been seeing a lot about we've been seeing a lot of people's webcams and we see a lot of, of what people's houses look like and it's very awkward in, in ways that you know i mean it's just awkward but well how so though well i hate it when you can see somebody's bed on camera Okay, I feel that. I, I don't that. like it when somebody is broadcasting from their bedroom and you can see their bed. I think a bed is a very intimate thing that not many people should see unless you're sleeping in it. So these people that broadcast with their bed as their background, I'm like, yeah. what kind of messages are you trying to send out? <laughs> Maybe they want somebody to join them in that bed. Yeah, well, Amber, yeah, it's very true. A, a lot of people have been quarantining, like we said, for about four weeks. And I'm curious, what, are, what have you been doing? to stay busy um i've actually been doing a lot of housework but i think today's national no housework day so i did um observe that other than finishing my painting in the back but uh just a lot of things that i've been putting off yeah you know it, look, it looks good well i have came up with some quarantine ideas for the listeners and okay. i'm very excited to share these listen guys i know that you're going crazy right now a little stir crazy a little cabin feverish going on and i use that fever 
uh, term lightly. I hope you don't have a fever. If you do have a fever, quarantine yourself. But there are here are some quarantine ideas for our listeners. Play board games. Hey, I was thinking about what I did growing up in Knott County, and I, I used to think about playing board. You know, I used to play board games all the time growing up with my. What was your favorite? Clue, without Clue. a doubt. Clue, yes. Clue was the best. Are and, you are you a good Clue player? Well, I'm one of these people that if I get really frustrated enough, I'm one of these people as a kid, I used to flip the game board over when I got frustrated. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, like Monopoly. Monopoly tears families apart, Amber. I would never play Monopoly with you because I have played Clue with you before. And it is uh, quite possibly one of the best things I've ever done because you're better, like watching you is better than playing the game. Well, there's Uno, there's Chess, there's Risk, there's Yahtzee, there's Rump. What's this word? Rummy? Rummy. Yeah. Rummy. rummy. Yeah. Rummy. Uh, Scattergories. Uh, that, th- those are great board games. Try it. Guess who? My God. I love Guess Who. Play Guess Who. Pull out the old, dust off the old board games and put them in. Put them in like it's a video game. Take <laughs> off the board games off the shelf and lay them out and roll the dice and you'll have a good time. I'm telling you. Play some board games. Uh, another thing you could do, you could do a puzzle. Puzzles uh, are very relaxing. It's very therapeutic. It makes your mind work. Uh, d- you could uh, develop a new skill. Amber, it looks like that you picked up painting. I think that <laughs> painting is uh, from the background. You know, a few. Sh- it's a few streaks. Not many. There streaks. are no streaks in just my a paint. Few. Just a few. I just see. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's woodworking that you could do. I know woodworking is. I've always wanted to be a woodworker. So now maybe here's your time while you're in quarantine to test your woodworking skills. Gardening, get out. The weather has been beautiful. You can get out and garden. This is the time to grow your peas, your potatoes, and your, and your, and your mints, and your cucumbers. This is the time. That was a very random selection of things to grow. Cooking. Cooking is a great skill to pick up right now because people don't really need to be going out, picking up. I mean, I, I get it. Take out. Limit yourself, though. And definitely do it because it's it's good for the community. Like, it helps small businesses. But you really need to uh, limit it because you are still – you need to limit your exposure, I would say. But it's a good time to pick up cooking. Uh, there is scrapbooking. Scrapbooking, no? No, that's not a no a from me. Not a fan of scrapbooking. No. Card making? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe. When's the last time you wrote in a card? Like, are we talking like just a homemade, like old fashioned card or just a, maybe just writing out a, a greeting card to someone? Uh, writing out a greeting card, something like that. I mean, it's just something to keep you busy. This is the time now to keep you busy. I mean, seriously, think about the things that you used to do growing up. Think about it's There's no difference, Amber, in, in how it was you growing up and how it is now. So think about some of the things that you did to make you stay busy. I mean, you have to get imaginative. You have to get creative. I remember when I was a kid. I owe all of my creativity to my upbringing because I was required to be creative. I remember as a kid, I used to have this little power wheel, Jeep, this little Jeep Wrangler. And I remember that I used to be, you know, I was a little creative fella. And I I remember that I would fill it up on the gas tank. I'd put uh, grass in it. Okay. Yeah. And when the grass would die because the grass would die from being in the gas tank. When the grass was dead, that means you was out of gas. <laughs> so I always okay. Like, I give you a, I give you an A on that one. But you know, as a kid, there's some, there's certain things that you gotta, you, know, you gotta be creative because we didn't have malls, we didn't have movie theaters, we didn't have that stuff. So they're no. really, I'm used to it. Like I said, I'm conditioned to it. But some more ideas: website creation for those of you who are <laughs> interested in maybe creating a website. Uh, plan a vacation for inspiration. Amber, right now is the time for people to start daydreaming and yeah. thinking about the time when things are going to turn back to normal. Because I, I tell you, I catch myself all the time thinking, oh, when all this ends, I can't wait to go to Vegas. I'll lick every uh, poker card I see. I'll, I'll lick every uh, uh, poker machine. I'm kidding, by the way. I'm just going to really, say, why are we licking things? I'm really just excited to get out and, and get things back to somewhat of a, a normal somewhat I, of a normalcy I, I i can agree with you on that uh write a book you could write a book okay i've actually been thinking about doing that have you yes i just don't know the topic yet 
would it be an autobiography or are you thinking something would people read though the autobiography of adam banks i don't think so not if you so. didn't put like good juicy gossip things in there no yeah i, I don't know maybe I'd, I'd have to do some type of maybe a fiction story but base the character on me and just i kind of like tell some true stories but it'd be fiction so you could add in some some great some great stories to and embellish it a little bit because it it is it is fiction or if you don't want to write you could read true you could read well that is some quarantine ideas for everybody out there listening uh, this is house arrest series volume three broadcasting from the house i'm at mine ember is at hers we got a big episode today caleb brown is a registered nurse she is coming on in here in a, in a couple minutes i would say around segment three into segment two start of segment three yeah i'd say the start of segment three kayla brown's going to come on and she's going to talk about what her life has been like since this whole quarantine or yeah since this whole coronavirus has broken out what her life is like as a nurse in vegas of all places yeah she's a traveling nurse so she's has she been to different places amber has she been to different hospitals since this broke loose or did this break loose while she was in vegas i think this broke loose while she was in vegas okay yeah i mean it's just i, I think about our healthcare workers and i think about the people these nurses these people who work in labs these people who have to go into these hospitals i want to hear what their story is like and today we get to hear what one of their stories is like because Kayla, I feel like it's going to come on and she's going to give one heck of an interview. I agree. I think it's going to be nice uh, to maybe shed. We know kind of what's going on in Kentucky right now, but I think it's going to be nice to see kind of what really is going on, not only in another state, but in a huge, you know, a huge city right now. Exactly. Yeah. So she'll be coming on around the four thirty mark for everybody. I, I really am excited for it. Caleb Brown to join us. But Amber, Good Friday is tomorrow. It's probably going to be the most, it's very, it's, it's weird. I mean, how about that? Church is usually a day where churches are full. It's going to be a ghost town. Churches well, are going to be empty. I think that people are going to start adapting. I think that I've um, definitely seen people taking steps to still I guess use technology to still be kind of with their family. So I am kind of curious to see. I know there's a lot of digital uh, things that are people are trying to get together for um, Easter. So I don't think I don't think all is lost. I think that yes, our pews will be empty, but I think that we're going to be able to kind of you know still have that family and religion aspect still together. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, and and I do think that the spirit still will exist on Easter. It's always pretty on Easter. It's all people. I think that spirit will still be in the air. I do too. Even though this is going on, I think that more than ever, I think that you talk about probably a crash on the internet of everybody tuning into Easter services online because yeah. yeah, I don't know if zoom or Facebook live will be able to hold the uh, services, but all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take, a quick commercial break and when we come back we got lots more off the cuff stick with us welcome back everybody to off the cuff adam banks here with you amber is also with me at her house i'm at mine we are social distancing this is house arrest volume three we are quarantining trying to stay safe and healthy and amber i was driving around like most people, because you got to get out of the house. You got to get some sunshine. And I was oh, yeah. thought, you know, it's a good day to wash my car, clean the inside of my car out. Might not have been the best idea touching the hose and stuff, but I did it anyway. Yeah. And when I was, I, I tell you, I, every car wash, why is it that every car wash that you go to, something don't work on it? Whether it's the soap, whether it's the dryer, whether it... it Every vacuum cleaner I went to, it ate up every quarter I had. Well, how many quarters did you put in, though? Well, you know how it is. It's like $1.50 or $1.75 for five minutes of vacuuming. I yeah. would put in, so I put in like six or seven quarters, and it wouldn't work. And so I was like, well, maybe it just – I didn't put in enough. So I put in extra quarters and put in more and put in more, Yeah. and it would just eat them up. So I don't know if they just – I don't know if the community or the city just shut down the vacuum cleaners – thinking that that was a bad idea for people to be doing what I was doing. But there was Probably. other people 
There was other people around me vacuuming their car, six feet apart, of course. Okay. But yeah, it ate up all my quarters. I, and still, my car is not as clean as what I want it to be. What you should have done is watched for someone to leave and like piggybacked off of theirs and at least got one side done. <laughs> Usually people let those run out though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I was always, I would go through one cycle and then I'd put quarters again and I'd have the second cycle, but I would be done about two seconds into the first, like half of the second cycle. So maybe not. On our last segment, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about quarantining ideas and ideas that you can have to while you're stuck at home. Uh, Amber, you're married. So yes. you're stuck at home with your significant other. So I'm stuck at home by myself. I'm not married, nor do I live with anybody. And I like it like that, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, this sounds very nice. It, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. But we both are living this quarantine with two different perspectives. You yeah. are married. I'm, I'm curious do you think that this quarantine has brought you and your husband closer or do you think that it's maybe caused more of a drift in your marriage? And please don't be afraid to be very transparent with this. You owe it to the listeners. No, I actually think that um, this quarantine has kind of made me stop and I've been able to kind of breathe and relax a little bit. I've been able to kind of focus more on things that I love, such as my relationship with Wiley um, so no, I actually think from our perspective, I think it's actually made us a little bit, um, stronger, not only as a couple, but it, I think it's kind of strengthened our friendship and our partnership because again, he's had to be here with me. Well, a professor, a psychology professor at the university of Washington said in a quote, he wrote an, he said this in an article, he said, scary times have the potential to drive people together or apart. And he says, on one hand, romantic partners could have a new appreciation for having someone to face a scary future with. On the other hand, if you are at odds with one another and you realize this is not the person who has your back or not the person you want to have your back, it might be a stark realization that you are in the wrong relationships. Think about this. Think about couples who maybe are just now starting out that aren't married and they don't really know each other. And they say, if you really want to get to know somebody, live with them. Oh, and yeah. right now you are really getting that experience of living with somebody. So you're really getting to know somebody because nobody is as real as they are in their home. There's just, there's, I mean, that's just a fact. So when you are inviting somebody in, in such an intimate setting, you are, woo, you're inviting, you're opening up a window in your life that nobody else gets to see. So you really get to know somebody. So that could, you could come to a lot of realizations like, hey, maybe who you thought you should be with isn't the person you thought they were. I'm, I'm curious to see how many people we're going to see kind of come through the other side of this. Yeah, I'm telling you what. <laughs> uh, Oh my gosh, the show thread. I haven't even been keeping up with the show thread, but it's blowing up and I, I want to get to that in just a second. So thank you for writing on that and keep it, keep it going. But yes, I am curious to see, but you're saying it's actually brought you together. So yeah, it could go one way or the other. You could, you might be the couple that never got to spend any time together. You were always, you made time for other things besides each other. And now you have nothing but time. And now exactly. you are spending all of this time together and you're realizing how great that person is exactly but amber i'm since we're all at home and we're listening to this a lot of us with our significant others i'm going to yeah. give you five ways amber five of them that's okay that's a lot that's not four that's five okay five ways for you and your lover to uh -huh. survive this quarantine okay so. can i add my own comments in as we go well, uh, uh, absolutely. That's what you're here oh, for. Oh, okay. Help each other deal with the emotional roller coasters. Number one, Amber, you got to have each other's back. You got to help. You um, got to. You got to help each other deal with this because we're all we all deal with this differently. So have each other's back. Under be understanding. I agree with that one. Practice healthy coping skills. Um, I don't think I have healthy coping skills like in general, so that probably would not work for us. Yeah, you guys need to, I'm telling you, you guys need to uh, get out, practice good coping skills, get a little mm -hmm. vitamin D, take a walk together. Uh, 
Uh, number three, look at it as an opportunity to grow closer. Do things together. I, I, ta- I gave on the last segment quarantine ideas, things that you could do while you're in quarantine. Do a lot of those things with your partner. Make a puzzle together. Go on a home date together. Watch a movie. Take a bubble bath. Whatever it is that you want to do no. that you normally wouldn't do, you mean you wouldn't take a bubble bath? I don't do bubble baths, and we've talked about this, I think, two or three different times on the show if people want to go back in the archives and listen to us talking about <laughs> bubble baths. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm, I veto bubble baths. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Well, bubble baths are nice. You should try them, especially with your date. No. You, you definitely should. Okay. And, all, and number five, think about the story you'll have down the road. Think about the story you could tell your kids, your grandkids, about the time that you were quarantined together and you got stuck. Well, it would probably be very boring. So. You would think? Yeah, probably. I mean, what's exciting about, hey, I woke up every day, went upstairs, hung out in the family room, watched Total Divas. There's nothing fun to that. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody does do exactly that and uh, just try to, follow those tips and i hope you and your lover is getting along during this and you aren't tearing your uh lover apart okay before we go to our song of the week which i'm excited to play let's go to the show thread and see what's going on let's go here wiley turner says hey beautiful thanks wiley you're beautiful too uh tyler Fields says hey friend i don't think he's talking to me where's my friends on this thing where are my (laughs) friends i see all of your friends uh-huh. I have good friends. Yeah, okay. Well, good. Well, hopefully some of my friends join us too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take off the cuffs song of the week break. We are going to play It's Fitting because this is the House Arrest series. It's called You Can't Touch This. You Can't Touch This. That's a great song. If you guys haven't noticed on my social media, on my personal social media at the Adam Banks on Twitter, Instagram, or you can follow me on Facebook, whichever you prefer. I am posting old archives of me co-hosting Midday Kentucky. I haven't been able to put out a new episode in a long, long time because of the social distancing. Can't wait to get back in the studio. Can't wait for things to get back to that normalcy. So in the meantime, if you see me posting a from the archives, Midday Kentucky video, check it out if you would like to see me on Midday Kentucky at a- on ABC 36 at 1230. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after these words. Stick with us. It's the end of the world as we know it. Tonight Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also joining me via Zoom. She is at her house. I'm at mine. And I tell you, I have so much spam on my computer. Usually I'm used to using the studio computer and I know what you guys are thinking. It's probably something that I've been looking at. It's not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to get through this little bio of our guest who I was telling you was coming on. Kayla Brown, very excited to have her. And I, I, it's weird that I have to read her bio because I know her so well. Uh, Let me just preface this with, I've known this guest, this lady for, oh my gosh, I would say, close to 25 years that is nuts For sure. even saying that yes that is nuts but Caleb Brown is joining us via zoom to talk about working as a traveling nurse during this global pandemic Kayla has an associate's degree in nursing at Hazard Community and Technical College a bachelor's degree in nursing at Eastern Kentucky University and a master's degree at Chamberlain University specializing as a family nurse practitioner I am happy to now be joined by KB. Caleb Brown, how's it going? <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I'm in Sin City and it's shut down, so not that great. So. You, are, you are in Sin City. You are in Las Vegas, so you are a traveling nurse. Now, I was asking Amber a while ago, I said, did this coronavirus, did this pandemic become a pandemic while you were in Vegas? Mm-hmm. So I signed my travel contract to come out here back in, uh, late November, early December, and then I've been out here since February the 6th, so right when I came out here, corona, the word coronavirus was being tossed around, um, and then it, now it's this, so yeah, it, it's happened since I've been here. 
So you were probably, I mean, that really sucks because you were probably going out to Vegas being like, oh yeah, I'm going out. It's Las Vegas. I get to go play some slots, bet on some sports. I mean, and you're out there in Vegas doing your thing. Probably one of the, I mean, it is the place of entertainment and you go out there and this happens. It's not the way you've seen it. It's not the way you've seen this visit going. This is my first trip to Vegas. Like this is the first time I've ever been. (laughs) Wait, like your first time you've ever been? Yeah. Oh no! I did get to experience it for like about a month, um, in its true glory. But now it's shut down. Like even the casinos, like if you drive down by the strip, they're barricaded and boarded up. Like nothing is open. It's crazy. And that is so scary because I've been to Vegas a couple times, and it is the most lively city in the entire country. I mean, it is. It it is it. Just the city of entertainment is so full and fun. And it's probably really scary to see it in times like this. So, Kayla, let me ask you. You are a nurse. You're a registered nurse. And you are, I'm telling you, you are very credible to talk about these things. So, tell me some of the things you were seeing in the hospital during this global pandemic. Well, I mean, it's definitely different from back home. I mean, you are from where I'm from. So, you're not seeing it as much as what I'm seeing it. Um, Definitely been exposed. When this first came about, I was you know skeptical uh like uh, I think a lot of healthcare workers were when I say you know everybody's like well um you need to be careful because you know all these diseases affect older people and the immunocompromised and all this stuff that's true with every disease okay and that's that was my mindset going into it like it's nothing different than the flu trust me when I say that it I've changed my mind and it is different um, it spreads like wildfire. Um, people are super, super sick, even, even the young and healthy. I see people that are my age and younger. I'm 30. What, how old am I? I'm 31. People that are my age and younger that are on ventilators for over a week and are fighting for their lives. So, I mean, it's, it's, my mindset has definitely changed from, you know, when I first heard about it until now, because now I'm seeing so much of it. So we have a whole floor dedicated you, to just coronavirus. You said that you are seeing young people on ventilators. You're seeing that with your own eyes. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we have a patient the other night, she, without going into detail with, you know, HIPAA violation and stuff, but in her twenties, um, anytime that she would come off oxygen, her sat her oxygen saturation would drop into the sixties. Um, patient, they were in their thirties, uh, no other health problems really, um, on dialysis just the other day because their kidneys were shutting down and it, it just affects people different. Um, I, I don't, nobody understands it. So are these underlying conditions? I mean, did these people, were they healthy when they came to the uh-huh. hospital at first? Are you serious? They are? The one, the one that was on dialysis just the other day, uh, with the, they were in their thirties and the only comorbidity that they have was they were obese. Well, so you said that you've definitely been exposed. So have you personally treated someone that you knew was COVID-19 positive? Mm-hmm. We have, we have multiple um, patients. I work in the ICU. Uh, we have multiple patients in the ICU that are, um, you know, true positives. And then we have a whole floor of patients that are either true positives or they're waiting on results to come back to see whether or not they're positive or negative. And pretty much what we're doing, like me and a doctor talked about it the other day, um, we're basically waiting for those people on the floor to get to the point to where they can't breathe. And then they're sending them to us to intubate. My goodness, just listening to you, you really make me want to just put on my hand sanitizer right now. I mean, I'm (laughs) telling you, and those that are watching this on Facebook live, you actually see that's what I did. I mean, that is, that is, uh, so knowing that somebody is positive with this virus, do you, that's got to affect your mental. You have, what's that like going oh in? Gosh. How do you prepare for that? Uh, there, there's no prepared. Like I basically like cry every day. <laughs> so, I mean, like it's, yeah. it's crazy. It, and it's, it's probably harder for me than it is other people out here just because like I'm here by myself, you know, I came out here. I don't really, I mean, I made friends, but like not they're really good friends, but they're not like, I'm, they're not close to me, you know? Um, so, and it, it just, it sucks too, because 
we're not equipped with the things that we need. Nobody is. No hospital is. You know, we get an N95 mask that um, we have to sign out. We have to sign our names to, to check the N95 out. And that's the only mask that we get all night to use. Like if, and we get a, a brown paper bag with our name on it to put it in to make sure that, you know, you're keeping your, your mask, your mask. And even when I put it on and go into a patient's room, if I have to go into another COVID positive room, I have to use that same mask. Like they're not throwing them away. We can't, we can't afford to. Well, Kayla, you, you're touching these patients and not just you, all of these nurses, all of these medical professionals, you're touching these patients. How does a person not contract the virus when you are literally touching COVID-19 patients? Um, I mean, I'm sure that we're all carriers. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not you're going to develop the symptoms or, mm. you know, so I'm just so waiting scared. on when I start to get a cough and a fever and hopefully I'm, I mean, I mean, we, we've had success stories. Some people do go home with, you know, very mild symptoms. Um, I mean, I don't get to see that as often just because I work in the ICU. I don't get to see the ones that are, you know, healthy and get to go home after a couple of days stay. Um, the ones that I see are the ones that end up being really bad. So when you get home, do you strip down your clothes? How, oh, yeah. What do you do when you get home? I basically just throw my clothes in the corner in a garbage bag and then go to the shower and then take the garbage bag and turn it upside down and dump it into the washer. And, you know, I know y'all are experiencing the toilet paper shortage and all that stuff out there too, but so are we. And I actually had a girl, she messaged me the other day. She bought me some, she found me some of the disinfectant at Lysol, um, like the, the laundry detergent. Right. And she sent it to me because she's like, you need this. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> Did, uh, <laughs> I make that sound really dirty a while ago when I said strip down. I didn't mean for it to be. Uh, no, it's okay. Because that's exactly what I do. <laughs> You're saying strip down <laughs> and you've got spam on Vegas. your computer. While in Vegas, let's, you know. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Kayla. Are nurses getting extra compensation during this crisis? Not here, no. Um, I am. My next assignment, I just signed the contract today to go to Nashville. They are offering crisis pay there, travelers. So I will be getting crisis pay then. Um, but I, I guess the Nashville and some of the places in Tennessee, and I think like Louisiana, New York City, of course, New Jersey, they're offering crisis pay because they're seeing just um, an influx of, you know, the disease and they need more nurses. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. We got more with Kayla Brown coming up after these words. Stick with us. Amber is also in the studio along with Kayla Brown, our special guest. She is a traveling nurse talking about what it's like through a nurse's eyes dealing with this global pandemic. And we were talking during the commercial break because we go way back, me and Kayla Brown. I mean, we do. Kayla, I was telling, I mean, just like Amber, Amber and I have known each other for a long time. And when I talk about my childhood, when I talk about stories of things that I did, you're all up in my stories mm -hmm. you are I mean you're just all up in them just the little things and and I was thinking well I mean we did go to school together grade school together and then we skipped high school we didn't go to high school together but we went to college together we went to prom together <laughs> we went to prom together. <laughs> how, was, how was your senior prom day how could you forget that that's very true. Well, you know, prom, I, I, and I talk about this, I'm very vocal about it. Prom, and it had nothing to do with you. It was just prom at, was just not really that fun. I look at all these other people that we went to high school, all these other people who went to high school at all these big cities and they had proms and hotels and, and like vacation proms. And I'm like, yeah, we had ours in the gym. I graduated with 14 people. So you, you're preaching to the choir right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so it was, uh, it, yeah, me and Caleb Brown, we go way back. All three of us do, Amber, Caleb Brown. I was going to say, I think me and Kayla go further back than you and Caleb because I'm pretty me and sure Amber. Um, Kayla was my first friend that I made in kindergarten. We went to Duff together. Yes. Duff so we've, we've been kicking it since, what, 93, 94? Plus, our parents were friends. 
Yeah, they were nurses. My mom and your mom were nurses together. Yeah, Hazard. so we kind of like we kind of gravitated towards one another at young ages. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got she's now all grown up, Kayla Brown, and she's now a profession now. She's a nurse and she's talking about the coronavirus and what it's like through her eyes and through nurses' eyes. Kayla Brown, have you heard about this fake coronavirus testing going around? No. Tell me yeah. about it. Yes. Why hasn't anybody heard about this? There are people actually doing what do you call that bootleg? They call that yeah, they're <laughs> bootleg coronavirus testing where they are testing for coronavirus but they're doing it for dna purposes like they're wanting to collect people's dna so yes oh my god yeah because people right now they're really scared about having the virus so they're wanting to get tested and testing is very limited so people will do anything to get tested at this point so if you see things that are real sketch just be real weary i can't believe you haven't heard about that no most people they'll believe that i should be tested before i come back to kentucky are, are you as people uh, that's a, interesting you say that are people kind of are you getting that feeling that people don't want you to come to kentucky really Very much so <laughs> yes uh when i go to the walmart here like the other day i had to run into walmart right fast before i before i went into work so i was in my scrubs and people just like basically run the other direction when they see me which is fine that means i don't have to socialize <laughs> but I've actually heard of, you know, healthcare, work, healthcare workers getting like verbally abused and stuff in Walmarts and all those public places for wearing their scrubs. Yeah. Subway um, was a big one. Uh, people didn't want medical workers coming in with scrubs, but in a way, you know, can't you see where they're coming from? I can, but most of those people that are complaining about it are the same ones that have wore the same pair of gloves for the past two weeks right. and don't take them off. And chances are my scrubs are cleaner than your gloves. So, and I'm just I don't know, but, watching myself on the Zoom, and I probably have touched my face 30 times since we've started this broadcast. <laughs> it's not what you should do. Thermix. Hey, I've got it with me right here. I there keep it with go. me. I keep it in my car. I keep it right here on my desk. Keep it everywhere. I limit my stay, though, at home. So are you watching Andy at Five? Are you a big fan? Uh, I have watched a couple times. I did not watch today because yeah. I was getting ready for this show. But, right. <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're, we're more entertaining. Everybody's asking me, like, are you going to quarantine for two weeks when you come home? Are you going to quarantine when you come home? Are you going to be tested? Are you going to be tested? First of all, it's not up to me to be tested. Like I can't just drive up and say, Hey, test me. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of different things that have to happen first before. Like I, I'm going to have to show symptoms or something like that. And the other thing is, is that I'm going to be going and working in Nashville and coming home. And while I'm not going to be around anybody, when I do come home, um, I can't just start my quarantine over every two weeks, right. you know, I mean, every day that I go, you know, that I come home, I can't, but, but regardless i'm going to quarantine every time i like i'm just not going to go around people but hold like, on I'm, I'm i think andy Bashir said that he doesn't want anybody coming into kentucky did he did he say that amber i thought that was what i heard but i'm sure because she's a permanent resident of kentucky i'm sure they're not gonna have any issues with that i think it was yeah. people that were coming for other reasons other than residency okay Right. I have a Kentucky license, driver's license and um, I think for work you can travel. I think that's one of the things. And like I have a paper from my um, company saying, you know, I'm an essential worker, blah, 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 blah. And so if I get stopped and they're asking why in the world that I'm coming across the state line or anything like that, I just show my paper, say, hey, you know, here I am. Well, have you fell in love with Andy Bashir like the whole state has? I mean, I've done a great job for sure. I'm not going to go tattoo Andy on the bottom of my foot soon, but I think he's doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, he reminds me of a really good third grade teacher. I think he would be fantastic as a third grade teacher. I mean, imagine <laughs> some student throwing a paper airplane and him saying, now don't throw that. You knew better. <laughs> we can't be doing that. We can't be doing that. Think about our principal. He didn't even have to raise his voice. He would just, he would look at me all the time and he would have a finger that was as long as this microphone. And he would just he would just wave it back and forth like this, and uh, I would say, "Oh my gosh, that's scary!" You know exactly <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> you know, that's why I laugh so hard. <laughs> and yeah, he wouldn't even when he wanted. Do you remember our principal? 
he would poke you when he wanted your attention and he would press. It wasn't even like a poke, like a constant <laughs> tap. It was just a poke, like a hard poke on the shoulder. I'm like, ow, Mr. Hall, that hurt. Uh, I remember. Yeah. We go way back. We got a lot of, got a lot of stories and uh, we, we do. Well, Kayla Brown, it's been amazing having you on. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to tell us your story. And, and uh, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. Stay safe and healthy out there. And thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating this. No Most problem. people don't. <laughs> no problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that kind of brings off the cuffs house arrest series volume three to an end. We're going to close the show with a little Joe Diffie, uh, guitar man. I wanted to play that. Pickup man. Oh, you know, pickup man. Did I say guitar man? You did. I think that's what you want it to be called. Well, my dad had a song called Guitar Man when he was like 19, and he played that on American Bandstand. Oh, he did. Like, like your dad? My dad, For yeah. real? Yeah, he has oh, a record. Okay. Yeah, it was called Guitar Man. But anyway, pick up man for Joe Diffie. Kayla Brown, I know you're a big Joe Diffie fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, just assume, up jukebox. I just assume that you know who Joe Diffie is. You do know who Joe Diffie is, don't you? Yes, prop me up beside the jukebox. Yes, there you go. I was going to be disappointed if a dry creaker didn't know Joe Diffie. Joe Diffie. I thought that was like your guys' uh, mayor. Like that he came to the trailer that one playing time. Playing Joe Diffie. Check out your windows. Well, Joe Diffie, he died of coronavirus. Yeah. That's how he died. Now, that, now that's scary now, and, it's, and sad. If this hadn't happened, Joe Diffie would still be with us. So it sucks when you hear about people that we – love and people that brought us good work and entertainment just dies from this so many celebrities have it but anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening to another episode of off the cuff if you want to follow me on instagram and twitter follow the adam banks follow the facebook page at off the cuff with adam banks thank you amber turner always for joining me kayla brown it's been amazing having you come back anytime thank you. all right ladies and gentlemen I'm Adam Banks. That is Emma Turner. And thank you, Kayla Brown. And this is Off the Cuff. We'll see you next Thursday from 4 to 5. We'll catch you down the road. Mm -hmm.